Ladies and gentlemen, through the Oculus and the yeah, Hell yeah! Yes, sir! While we wait for Eric, dude, how have you been? How was your week? I know it was weird. We we had this scheduled last week. You you fell a little ill, and then we rescheduled for Monday. I all of a sudden got food poisoning, and I've been down and out for three days. Are you feeling better? Yes, I'm feeling a lot better, and uh, I'm glad you're feeling well, too. The food poisoning sucks, man. It it's, that stomach up. it's no joke. I, I ordered Popeyes. Me and my wife both had a Popeyes sandwich, but I'm weird. I, I took mine. I deconstructed it, added, tossed it in buffalo sauce, blue cheese crumbles, and something took me out of the game. I don't know what it was, but something took me out. It will not stop me from eating another Popeye's chicken sandwich in the future, though. Are, do you do you know Do you know JB? You should. I think so. JB, um, I can't see his face. I could. You, kind of, he was. You at Froggies. He was our, our our host for the Froggies event recently. Oh, oh, there he is. Hey, yeah. What's up, man? How you doing? <laughs> Yeah, I'm doing great, man. Thank you so much for uh, supporting local band Smoke Out and being here, man. I really do appreciate that. Yeah, Rainy's the coolest. Yeah. Uh, I appreciate local Smoke Out supporting all these bands and doing things like this. Hell yeah. Uh, so well, I guess we'll just get started while we wait for Eric. But uh, I, I've i known you for a while, Rainy. And uh, at the time, I, I don't think I've ever asked you, how did you joining Oculus or come about? How did that all start? So... Uh, kind of started with me and Lauren actually we were in a band before and we were in a band called uh, Tonight Shall Rise and the band just kind of fell apart and you know months later we were saying you know you want to you want to stick together and try to create another band and for a little while we had some riffs going on it was just me and her and uh, then we started like jumbling around the name and it, it was going to be Oculus first but Obviously, there's Oculus Rift and or whatever those little goggle things, that wasn't gonna work. And uh, so then we were like, well, Oculus is like a portal to a new beginning. So how about through the Oculus? And that was kind of how the name came about. So once we had the name, then we started like really s scouting and searching. And uh, Eric worked with me at Cal Portland. We run heavy equipment, and I used to always see him like driving the big old loader and like doing this. I was like, dude, that guy's gotta be a fucking drummer or a crackhead. <laughs> <laughs> so then Sarah, so, so Sarah came last. Yeah, Sarah came last. And uh, so me and Eric jammed out after I figured out that he was a drummer. And uh, we just did like these cover songs just to see if we had a vibe going and we vibed right away. So uh, yeah, and then we, uh, so Sarah came about an odd way. My friend Marty, um, he messaged me one day and he's like, Hey, I know this girl that has a YouTube channel and she sings like a lot of good covers and stuff like that. I don't know if you want to check her out. I don't know if you're looking for a singer. I was like, yes, I'm actually looking for a singer. And, uh, it comes out that my friend Marty and his daughter are friends with Sarah. So that's how that came about. Hell yeah. And, and you guys have such a unique sound. Like it doesn't, it doesn't sound like any other band I've heard where she has like a, an operatic feel but it's mixed with like black metal it's it's very unique and cool and you guys have a just a dope niche and I, I i just love it it's awesome thank you i think the style that you know is being created is because all four of us like different genres of metal you know um eric's more like anthrax thrash you know sound um lauren's in a more power metal like nightwish and uh sarah is in a power metal too but now she's really big into black metal and then I'm really influenced by like melodic death metal. So we just kind of put our influences and it's, that's how it's getting created. I guess it's kind of weird that we all like really different genres of metal. So we got, we got March 9th coming up fairly fast. I saw you guys do the, the garden amphitheater walkthrough. That's going to be a big one, dude. How stoked are you guys for that one? That's going to be fun. Oh man. We, we are so, so thankful, especially for you for, you know, putting the word out for us. And uh, it's definitely we definitely feel this is somewhere where we where we belong, you know, to play in front, in front of these types of crowds. Um, the the management there and the the guy that did the tour with me was so kind and generous, you know, and you don't get that kind of stuff all the time. So it was nice to have that humbling experience. 
I've actually never been there before, so this will be like my cherry pop for seeing a show there. But I'll absolutely be there. Uh, I'm I'm ecstatic. Have, are you normally an Escape to Fate fan, or is that kind of not the normal style of metal you jam? Um, maybe back in the day, and then I like in the early 2000s when they were hitting hard. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's when I was kind of listening to them, and then after that, they just kind of fell off the map for me. But it sounds like they got a new album that they're touring on or something like that. So I'm curious to hear their new music for sure. I haven't really dived in yet. I kind of want to actually live a live experience. They've been um, through some changes. They, they're they they're kind of like blew up with an, a certain singer, and then something he, that yeah. he did got him kicked out, and then they ended up having Craig, and Craig's been there for quite a while probably at least 10 11 years now i would say but yeah they're those guys like never stop touring um that should be a fun one uh, i don't know if is eric is eric okay <laughs> we'll see i'll tell you what check on eric real quick um let's go ahead and jam an oculus track right now is there a particular music video you want us to spin first uh, music video let's um let's do belladonna's deadly watts our newest one who directed this one um, his name is uh, well, his name his nickname is John Atello, and he's done our last three music videos or four. John Atello, I like that. That's cool. And he's got a band called the uh, Shellshock Brothers now. And they're badass. We just played a show with them in the Tiki Bar in Orange County. So the guy's really multi talented. Hell yeah. We're hanging out with Through the Oculus. If you guys are feeling it, please hit the subscribe button, support them. This is Belladonna's Deadly Waltz. If for some reason Eric doesn't make it, it's no big deal. We'll just we'll just bang this thing out, no worries. Yep. I, I'm thinking of more questions now. So when you guys are looking at Sarah's vocal covers, is she doing like the operatic style vocal cover or was she doing like black uh, metal style? The style were like actually more gentle, like, you know, Lena Del Rey and Evanescence and stuff like that. So when you found out that she could scream, you were like, this is, it's, you're in. Yeah, she, she actually kind of like developed the scream as she was in the band with us and just slowly started progressing and progressing. Wow. So I'm not sure if she was screaming that much before she joined the band i think she actually learned and she's a really fast learner and and learned the right technique and she never blows her voice out or anything that is amazing oh there he goes ladies and gentlemen eric freeman of through the eyes in the back goes <laughs> now i need to move one thing over eric how are you sir what's happening can you guys hear me we can how's awesome. your how's, how's your david brother uh, i've been busy you know tax season yeah it's, you got to make sure those taxes are right they, they're gonna come for you <laughs> oh yeah uh so we were just That's talking good. about i kind of just got like the the gist of how the band was formed i didn't know that you guys worked together and he saw you driving the forklift and just doing all of that. And that's how you guys oh, yeah. kind of hit it off. But uh, tell me, tell me, do you guys have any like fun before we go on stage rituals that you do behind the scenes that maybe nobody sees? Other than the normal metalhead drinking, uh, you know, it all depends on the place. Uh, if it's a really cool place like down in LA, I'm sure there's a bunch of cool restaurants we like to hit up, uh, but anywhere where there's alcohol for good. Excellent. Yeah, that's right. We definitely like a bite to eat together too, and kind of do this little calm down thing. Just kind of saw If it's a amped up show, you know, we get really hyped up in the back and start being like goofballs <laughs> for sure. What is? I'm gonna let JB ask a question or two in a second, but I have one more real quick one. Uh, what is? What is the goals for the band for 2023? Do you have like a mapped out plan of we'd like to accomplish this, we'd like to do this? What can you tell me? Uh, I'll name one. I'll let Eric name the other. I think for sure is getting new music out and we're, we're working on the, we got three songs tracked on drums and we're hoping to have the album out by the end of the year. 
So that's one of the goals. Uh, we're also trying to hit up some bigger shows. You know, uh, we still like all these little bar, uh, these little bar gigs, but we definitely want to start hitting some bigger stages for some bigger sound. Hell yeah, JB. Uh, what is is what's a question or two that you have for the guys? You know, totally random. You guys brought up Cal Portland. I live huh. up in Tehachapi, which is just a little bit outside of uh, one of the main uh, points of Cal Portland, which is in like Mojave kind of area. Uh, which which uh, Cal Portland are you guys familiar with? Is it in LA directly, or do you guys uh, travel for your work? Or uh, uh, we've been to the Shear Plant up here in Victor uh, Victorville, and as well as the shut, now shut down uh, Colton site. Which is where we did originally meet. Eric, oh, did you right did, okay. did you play in any bands prior to Oculus? Uh, nothing that made it. You know, still in the garage. That's that still count though. That still count. So d- nothing that played a show or just is that what you mean? Like you never played out. Not, in nothing. Bands? Nothing that could find a singer. How about that? Gotcha. Well, you found the right one, I would say. Let's jam a little bit more of this one right here. It's so new, unique, and badass. The fan, the crowd's gonna go crazy at Garden Map. I'm excited for you guys, man. That's gonna be a killer one. Uh, is there that, that sounds like it's gonna hit too? Yeah, for sure. Uh, I do like to do a trivia segment. Were either one of you able to bring hot sauce? If not, it's okay. Okay, okay. But while you grab it, let me let me uh, know what movie or TV show. And you guys maybe can agree on a movie or TV show. Have you seen the most? Where if I ask you trivia on this movie or TV show, you will not get stumped. In my opinion, it's easier to pick a movie because the TV show could have hundreds of episodes. I can just pick a random episode <clears throat> and stump you. Uh, is there a movie that you've seen so many times you will not yes. get stumped? What yeah, you got? I don't know if he's thinking about the same one as I am. What you got? Uh, sure. I'm going with movie. So. Going movie. Ace Ventura. Which one? Uh, which one are you better with? Uh, I'm not going with that. I'm going to go with Dumb and Dumber. Uh, you're going to lose me on that one. <laughs> Either one works. I-, I can do one Ace and one Dumb and Dumber. Um, <laughs> give me a Either second. Way, Jim Carrey. Definitely Jim Carrey. I heard recently that uh, he he re-signed on to do Grinch 2. Oh, hell yeah. I heard he was done completely with everything. I don't know. I heard that too, that he retired from acting and stuff, but I saw a post the other day that said that he had signed on to do Grinch 2. I'm sure if you throw $30 million his way, you know, you can nudge anybody. But, um, Man, he's standing on the Grinch too. <laughs> so, Rainy, grab grab the hot sauce. Leave me a second to look up some trivia. And uh, JB, right. go ahead and shoot Eric one more. I'm going to find a question. Yo, Eric, I'm I'm excited to be able to see you in your your new endeavors here coming soon with Escape the Fate. But with that being said, um, do you have either a goal or plans that you're able to share with us that are going to be like out of state or anything in that in that range? Uh, you mean as the band as a whole, right? Yes, of course. Uh, we don't really have anything specific. Just uh. You know, wherever the wind takes us, if it takes us to Florida, if it takes us to Texas, uh, just, you know, whatever good deal comes our way. As as someone that has a full nine to five, what what are the, the hurdles for, let's say someone gives you that that tour? Is is the job receptive to that? I imagine not. But is is like, are they welcoming you back when the tour is over? Or is that like if you go, you're fired? Uh, no. I've tried to make it a point to tell my uh, employers, you know, how serious I am with this band uh, and how serious this band actually is. Um, you know, just try to keep an open, a, a good open relationship with them communitively. Yeah, it's kind of the same way. Right when I took on this job, that was the first thing I told them. I was, I'm in a band and there's going to be times where I need uh, time off or um stuff like that and they agreed to hire me on so when that time comes 
I've already mentioned it to him. So that's smart. You and tell him. You tell him right out of the gate. Well, let's see I if we did. can stump you on uh, on this first trivia here. Here we go. In Ace Ventura, the end of the movie, the Miami Dolphins play in the Super Bowl. What team do they play against in the Super Bowl? Ace Ventura, but there's <laughs> when Nate, which which one was that? In the I'm first, in fan. the first Ace Ventura, when uh, oh. with Dan Marino and all that, and the Miami Dolphins. Uh, the, at the end shit. of the movie, the Dolphins play in the Super Bowl, but what team do they play? Uh, remember, remember the bird. I'm not, I'm not taking a shot at top of people, aren't I? <laughs> Falcons? Hey, the Broncos. It is, it is not either one of them. We got them. <laughs> it is the Philadelphia Eagles. Enjoy the hot Eagles. sauce, Randy. <laughs> Sorry, my friend. I'll take some with you. Uh... We got them. Hell yeah. Have you guys ever thought about doing like a collab, like having a, a a major artist feature with Sarah on a track? Um, like if a major artist hit us up and asked if Sarah wanted to do vocals on it, is that what you're asking? No, I'm I'm saying like maybe you guys have contacted somebody and saying, "Hey, we'll pay X dollar amount to have you on an Oculus track in the future." Uh, oh, um, no, we haven't really thought about that yet, but maybe in the future that sounds definitely interesting. Could be cool. What is the yeah. hot hot sauce of choice that you have gathered for us today? Uh, this is Tapatio, so do I have to take a shot of it? Just do a little swig. You don't do a shot glass. Just a little sit back swig. There we go. He's a trooper. That's all we're asking right there. Hell yeah. We have people that come on and just like just go That's crazy and do like a whole shot glass worth of like ghost pepper, and then they're suffering the entire <laughs> rest of the interview. You never know how it's gonna go. But <laughs> um, let's say let's say hypothetically, label comes along. I know you guys are signed right now, correct? Yes. yes, we're signed by an independent label. That's awesome. Uh, metal. Let's say a, a Sony Records comes along and just buys you out of that deal and says, hey, here's $5 million signing bonus for each band member. You've taken care of your family. You've taken care of all the gear you could ever want. What is just a crazy toy that you would buy for yourself? You've got $5 million. You've got plenty of money. Don't worry about the money. Toy. I think mine would probably be, probably be twenty five or twenty four Mesa Boogie cabs that are all white. I want twenty four of them. Why that many? Why that particular number? That would definitely probably cover the stage at Glen Glen Helen Amphitheater. <laughs> Fair enough. Then I go home. <laughs> that would be awesome. Uh, I do have some Dumb and Dumber trivia ready, and this one is tough. So I hope you've seen it a bunch of times. We're going to try this one more time. In Dumb and Dumber, how much does Harry say the alarm costs? He's, Harry goes, the alarm alone could cost. And then he says oh, the dollar wow. amount. I told you these are tough. Eleven teams. Some real trivia right there. Yeah, it is. I've seen Dumb Number fifty times, and I had no idea the answer to that one. I think we may have a double stump on our hands right here. Give me another example of what he, what part is it he's saying? The, the example it says it says Harry, Harry says the alarm alone could cost me. That's the line in the movie. And he says it more than once. This is in the beginning, or it doesn't specify. But this is why the trivia, the <laughs> trivia part's hard. Cause that's why I say, say you've seen the movie, movie you line see... by line. If I've seen the scene, you know, right? It's yeah. okay. the answer is two hundred dollars. That was a hard one. <clears throat> but uh, mm. whew. now, now, Rainy, I know that you yourself put on shows for local bands. Let's go ahead and talk about that and plug plug your business as well. Is Ceaseless still still active? And how would somebody? get in contact with you if they live in Southern California and want to work with Ceaseless. Yeah, it's still chugging along. I'm actually putting together um, some really brilliant ideas, in my opinion, that are going to be coming along soon. 
um, for bands to hit me up, they can go on my Instagram or Facebook page. It's called Ceaseless Entertainment. And uh, we we do all types of genres. Um, now we're starting to get into, we might start getting into like EDM kind of stuff. And um, yeah, so stay tuned for this very exciting announcement that's going to be happening. It's going to be awesome. the most creative battle you've ever seen. Okay, cool. And then you've got you've got a big show coming up here fairly soon. Can we plug that as well? Oh, we're doing the uh, um, the festival at Transplants. Um, that is what day is that again? April 29th in Palmdale. We got eleven bands. That stage is amazing. They got the best best brewery in t- like in that whole area, and we played there quite a few times now. And um, I've actually never been there. I'm I'm due uh, to go. That's one near me, so, Eugene. It's a actually, good that's place. in Palmdale. That's only like 40 minutes from me in Tachapi. April um, 29th. I the, the fate's going to be there here soon, actually. So I, I hope to catch that sh- uh, that show for you, Randy. I'm writing this yeah, on my calendar sure. right now. Randy's festival, April 29th. Got it. 29th. Yeah. Randy, do you go to do you go to Nam? Yes. You already got all your badges stuff set up for for this year? Not not yet. No. I just got the email today about setting it up. That's why I was asking. We're trying to get oh, okay. we're trying to get I'll, JB I'll, in there. I, for some well, reason, I don't remember paying for it in the past, and it asked me to pay one hundred and forty dollars this time. Oh, one hundred and forty dollars! Wow. Yeah, I don't remember paying for it in the past, but I mean, I'm gonna pay. It's, it's no brainer. I paid like fifty dollars. Yeah, I want to say it was like either like very little money or or no money in the past but interesting yeah the first time i went i went i went with this in-year monitor company um that was with mike lira from where lies he helped me get in and then the next year i was able to put um through the oculus on the badge and just my name so that was kind of cool but i still had to pay 60 bucks but i mean that's that's well worth that you know yeah, that place that place is amazing. It's, it's you never know who you're gonna yeah. run into either. Like there's a rock stars left and right just walking around testing gear. It's it's pretty cool. Just the contacts <laughs> alone that I make that show is insane. Yeah, totally. Uh network network. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Oh, I was just saying that's a great, great place to network. We got time for for a couple more questions. Uh, JB, I'll let you ask your your final one here in a minute. But uh, one important one I want to ask is, of all the connections you guys have made, what is a piece of musical advice somebody's given you that just kind of opened your eyes or made you take your career a little more seriously, if you're willing to share? Go ahead, Eric. Oh, man. Let me see if I can form it into words, because it was a long, long conversation but a good buddy of mine, a mechanic buddy of mine, I used to work at his shop. Not really work, apprentice, help, annoy. Um, if I really, really wanted to do it, I just need to get up and do it. Uh, stop expecting things to just fall into your hands and, you know, take the action. I know, you know, those kind of words get said a lot, but it was it was just how it was presented to me. Uh literally made me start jumping onto craigslist the very next day looking for musicians and you know those dumb meetup apps for musicians and um obviously nothing really worked out in the end it was a co-worker who i ended up getting with but uh i don't know it just if you really want it you, you just need to start doing it like I, I don't know how else to say it really it's it just sparked the fire under you so to speak yeah just just get up and do it, you know. Not quoting Nike. What about for you, Randy? Um, I would say like the most important thing for us as a band is being friends as well, instead of just you know just a band. Um, there's a lot of times where I see bands that are don't even like each other in the in the band. You know that you can tell their vibe on stage is like very not musicianship. It's just kind of like they're there. And we strive on having fun together with anything we're doing. So just make sure you guys love each other in the band instead of hating each other. Because I've been in bands before where there was members that disliked each other and it just created really negative energy. So just always keep the positive energy and work hard and you'll get what you want. That's very sound advice for sure. 
JB, send us out on a high note, but ask maybe something a little crazy, crazy weird. And then I'll, I'll do one final one after that. One final one after that. I guess my quick crazy weird question would be if um, you had an opportunity to perform anywhere in California, uh, what would your choice be? Main stage, Amp Theater, Palladium. Some good answers. If it's if it's if, let's say let's say Garden Amp goes off without a hitch, there's there's twelve hundred people in the crowd. You guys are partying backstage afterwards, and now it's time to call it a night. Where are we going to get the munchy snacks? And what is the snack? Um, it's usually in and out. Hell yeah. yeah. Double, double. Kind of lost it for us, but yeah, in and out's the new winner. Yeah. It's a good call. Uh, I, yeah. I always go I always go grilled onions, add diced chilies. That's my, my double double order right there. And then animal style fries. Yeah, always. Got to be. Got to get them fresh. Well, fellas, I appreciate you hopping on. I'm sorry for for the back and forth to set this up with uh, Randy being ill and then me completely just bombing this whole week with food poisoning. But I'm glad we were able to do it. Ooh, man. I'll yes. see you March 9th. I'll be hooting and hollering as loud as my voice will allow supporting you guys. But uh, we wish you nothing but success the rest of the year. And uh, I'm sure I'll see you both soon, man. Cheers. Yeah.